Hi, this is the video in which I explain uh, about assignment one for the courses GRSC 6034 and 6035. So, for this assignment, you need to find a research paper that uses statistical methods to test a hypothesis. If there is no hypothesis tested, please choose another paper. Um, that hypothesis may not always be very explicitly tested, but if it fits a statistical model, then usually there is at least implicitly a hypothesis being tested. Now, I've suggested that you find a research paper in your discipline. The reason for that is to try and make sure that you understand the content of the paper as opposed to the statistical methods. Uh, if your discipline or your subdiscipline doesn't normally use statistical methods. I'm, I, it's not a problem for me, but I've encouraged you in that case to cover another discipline that you understand. So, for example, if you were um, a theoretical physicist, you might choose uh, an applied physics paper, or if you were a mathematician, you might, for example, choose a sports paper that uses statistical methods to test uh, predictions in sport or something like that. So the, the requirement about your discipline is really just to encourage you to make sure that you understand the content, the subject material of the paper that you've chosen uh, to do this. And obviously also because I want you to do this work yourself rather than just simply uh, obtaining material from somewhere on the internet. So this should be a paper that hopefully you've already read or know something about. Now, what I actually want you to do is, first of all, it says find one research hypothesis used in the paper. So there may be many research hypotheses in the paper. I just want you to choose one. So for that particular research hypothesis, I want you to identify the explanatory variables and divide up those explanatory variables into the independent variables and the dependent variables. So all explanatory variables should relate directly to that research hypothesis. If the connection is not obvious between the explanatory variables and the research hypothesis, then you need to explain what the connection is. So usually the hypothesis will be stated directly in terms of the explanatory variables, but if it's not, you need to explain to me because I may not know much about your subject area. The next thing you need to do is to identify the matching null hypothesis for that research hypothesis you've, you've dealt with in the first part. And then lastly, I want you to identify any control variables used in this hypothesis testing. Now, quite often the control variables are not explicitly stated in the paper, but there's nearly always at least an implicit control variable. So, for example, if this was a study about uh, some biomedical intervention for Hong Kong Chinese patients, then implicitly we're only talking about Hong Kong Chinese people, and implicitly we're only talking about patients rather than the whole general population. So those would be two forms of control that are being applied in this particular paper, even if it's never mentioned, uh, even if they're never mentioned as control variables in the paper. So you need to be aware of the fact that if, you, if it doesn't cover the, pop, the whole human population, then there would normally be an implicit control variable. Uh, or similarly, if we weren't talking about human beings, if we we're talking about animals, for example, then it might be a specific species or even a subspecies. So if you're talking about um, laboratory rats, for example, they often not just that they're rats, but they're often chosen to be genetically very similar. So that's again an implicit control variable, even if it's not mentioned as a control variable. And I've given you some guidance. I've said that the paper may not make the research and hypotheses explicit, but you need to identify them both. So that may require some thought after reading the chapter. The null and the alternative hypotheses must be related because usually they're complementary. Either the null is assumed to be true or the alternative. 
Secondly, the independent variables must be a potential cause of variation for the dependent variable in the research hypothesis. It's possible that there is no independent variable. Right? Sometimes that is possible. You could be testing uh, a research hypothesis which only relates to a dependent variable. But in most the papers you look at, there will be some independent variables. And please also note that control variables cannot be explanatory variables. If a control variable is mentioned in the hypothesis, that would suggest that it's actually an independent variable rather than the control variable because it's explicitly being tested as part of the hypothesis. So control variables would be things which are not mentioned in the formulation of the hypothesis, but are clearly some constraint um, on what, we, what data we're collecting. And again, if you look at the chapter, you'll see we also have statistical control variables, which may actually be included in the model, but still are not part of the hypothesis. Okay? Now, the administrative notes here are, please make sure you put your name and your student number inside the assignment. So if I print them all out, I know which one is which. The preferred length is up to two pages. So please do not include the whole paper. I do not have time to read it. You should be quoting the relevant parts of the paper. And of course, give me a proper reference to that paper in case I do need to look at it. Please submit via Moodle. Do not email it direct to me unless Moodle fails. Please submit it in an A4 PDF format to make it very easy for me to print it or read it. Now, I will not confirm receipt. If you check in Moodle, it should tell you whether you have successfully submitted the assignment. The deadline is shown in Moodle. You can see it there. Also, if your assignment is a pass, I will not confirm it directly. I will be, given that we're not going to be meeting in the classroom, I will put the mark sheet into the Google Drive folder so you'll be able to check whether you have successfully passed that assignment yet. But if I fail to receive an assignment or if the re assignment needs revision, then you most certainly will receive an email from me. Obviously, in this case, I cannot return the assignment in class as we're not going to meet. Right, so I, I will return you feedback if the assignment needs a revision. And in, then you will email me the second submission. If the second submission also needs a revision, I will give you another round of feedback. So you do not need to panic. Uh, I'm willing to mark it for as many times as you keep submitting it until you finally pass. Hopefully you will all submit the first time correctly. But if you don't, I will give you the feedback to make sure you do eventually submit it correctly. Okay? So there's no reason to panic. Again, I will explain more about the spreadsheet with the results in later on when I put it into uh, the Google Drive folder. I will let you all know so you can go and check if you're concerned that you haven't heard back from me and you want to know whether indeed it has been successful. So you'll be able to keep track uh, through the Google Drive folder. Okay? Thank you.